Okay, so in this video now, we've got these as elements. And the great thing about that now is that as I create these elements in my get task HTML, um, I have a variable that, that references the element, right? This input element. So I can add an event listener to that, right? I can simply go check box element dot add event listener. And I want to do, uh, oh, with checkboxes, it's interesting. I think we want, we don't want the click event. We want the, I think it's called the input event. Um, the input event is basically when any input element changes. Um, yeah, yeah. Whenever the element changes in some respect, we want to fire this thing. And we'll give a function called check box um, handler. Sure, that function doesn't exist yet. Let's put it down here. I'll call these my event functions. And I'm going to call, define a function called checkbox handler, which will add an E parameter because that might come in handy, I think. Right, the event listener will give me information about the event. Ah, and actually, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do console.log e.target. Okay, so the event listener will tell me, ooh, this checkbox handler, because we're adding this event listener to more than one checkbox element, right? We have a whole bunch of checkboxes. So we're adding the same function as our handler for all the checkboxes. So when it runs this code, we need to know well, which, which checkbox was actually clicked, right? So if we do e.target, that e.target stores, uh, the event listener tells us, hey, what, what, which one was clicked? So let's save that and hopefully, hey, look at that. So when I click it, by default, it changes it to checked like that. And it gives me, uh, it's a checkbox. Oh, and if I highlight over, it shows me it's that one. So let's try this one. So again, hey, that's that one. So the e.target gives me the correct check checkbox. Okay, awesome. So that's an event listener. Let's add one to the button as well. Um, all right, where's my button? Right here. So button elements dot add event listener. Uh, this one we want to click event, and we'll just say remove BTN handler. Right, the remove button handler. So function remove BTN handler. Again, I want that parameter to store the information that the event listener gives me. And sure, let's just do the same thing for now. E dot target. Okay, so if I click these, let's refresh here. If I click the button, cool, it gives me that button. How come it's not highlighting nicely? Let's hit another one. Okay, for some reason, these aren't highlighting as nicely, but I'm pretty sure it should be giving me the right button. Button element. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, now here's the next thing that's going to be a little bit interesting. This is a little bit new. Um, what we, oh, I also forgot to, oh, we'll talk about that later. Okay. What I need to do is, is it's great to have this e.target that I know which button I've targeted. But if I want to remove something, let's look at the remove first. When I remove a task, I need to know the index of the task so I can splice it from my array, right? So when I remove it, I need to have like, oh, when I click this button, I need to know that this is position zero and this is position one. Okay, now the way to do that is we can use something called a, a data set, a data set. And the way the data set works, I'm just gonna do it and hopefully it makes sense. Every, every element, actually I'm gonna do it in the HTML first. Every element you can add a data hyphen something. So I'm going to say data name is um, me, and a data hyphen ID is number one, right? And you can add as many of these data hyphen something, data hyphen something to an element. And what you'll notice then, uh, actually, I don't want to add it to this element. Let's add it to this one. And you'll see the reason for that in a second. So if I go into here now, and if I look at my task element, you'll see, okay, right, it has that data hyphen name, data hyphen ID. We can access that information from our JavaScript 
by using our data set. So this data set, it's kind of like an object. It's this DOM string map. Okay, and it's this object that has a name property and an ID property. Right? So data hyphen, whatever is after the hyphen is what the property value is going to be. So I can ask, I can access those things by going data set dot name or data set dot ID. And I can get those values. Um, notice how it always saves it as a string. We have to be careful about that. Because sometimes you want your data to be a number. You have to make sure you remember to convert it to a number. Okay, so I don't I don't want to do this because that really is useless information. But useful information would be this button. I would like it to know that it's a button for the the task that has a, an, an index of zero. And this button should have an index of one. So it knows its position. So we can do that very easily here. I'm just going to add it after the HTML. I'm going to go button element dot data set dot and and here I so we talked about how we can get the values we can actually also set the values right so I can go say data set dot index is assigned and thankfully we kept that parameter index right when I call this function I pass an I which is the index in my array so I can just set the index to be the parameter index okay let's save that and check that out so now when I click this button, data index zero. When I click this button, data index one, data index two, awesome, right? So we are now saving the index position of that task when we hit our remove button, okay? We're also going to want that for our checks. Well, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. Okay, so in our remove target, I think we'll finish, do that for this video. We'll finish that. We'll do the remove button handler, and then we'll deal with the checkboxes later. So here we go. We've just clicked the button and I've done console.log e.target. What I really want is get index of the task to remove. So I'm going to create a variable called index and we're going to access our e.target, which was this button. From that button, we're going to access, access its data set. I'm having a hard time saying that today. And then I want to get the index value. And, you know, let's convert that to a number. We'll put a plus sign in front to convert it to a number. I think when we do the splice, it doesn't matter that much. Um, I think JavaScript will take this as a number or a string, and it doesn't matter. But just to be safe, like we did it here, right? We convert it to a number. We should do that here. And then I'm just going to copy this stuff. Uh, we, we get the index. And then we're going to, oh yeah, let's, let's call it the same thing. That's cool. Task index. And then we're going to splice from that, right? That index is stored in the button. We're going to splice that from the array. We're going to save our task because we've updated the array. And then we're going to display the new task again. I think this should work. Crazy. Okay. Speaking of crazy, do something crazy. Let's remove that. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I know what happened. Okay, I know what happened. Oh, cool. It happened. It re oh, see, it did remove. You can see that, right? I removed it. Do something crazy is gone. Um, when we do our display tasks, we're just appending um, children to this. So if it already has children, it's going to append more children to it. Um, remember before we, we emptied the string and we had a, a brand new string? So I think we just have to do tasks um, elements dot inner HTML is assigned the empty string. We'll just empty the inner HTML, and then we can append these children to it. There might be a better way to do this, like a clear function. Uh, I think this is okay. Okay, so we'll save that. So when I say do footage, I remove it. Ha ha ha, awesome. So we removed it. What happened, right, was that the event listener, right, I clicked the button. It ran this remove button handler. The remove button handler got the index from the data set which we added here. This is awesome. Then we splice from it, we save it, and we display it. So it's saved now. Yeah, it's all saved. Remove. Uh, -da -da is there. Nope, I want to remove it. Awesome. Okay, that's it for this video. Next one, we'll work on these checkboxes and strikethroughs and things like that. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.